Hello, my name is Dr. Cheryl Gooden, and I am a practicing anesthesiologist with a subspecialty in pediatric anesthesiology. Today, I'd like to share some insights into using hyperangulated style video laryngoscopes. The techniques in this video are my own. You should always refer to the operations and maintenance manual prior to using GlideScope products. I found use of a hyperangulated video laryngoscope can be useful for difficult airways. We know that a number of syndromes are associated with a difficult airway. My first choice for a known or anticipated difficult airway is a hyperangulated blade. Because of its angulation and integrated camera, a hyperangulated video laryngoscope can provide an improved glottic view of the airway anatomy especially when the larynx is anterior. And I have found that sharing the live airway view helps those in the room to become more engaged in the intubation. This includes surgeons, nurses, and students. It is important to recognize that the technique for using a hyperangulated video laryngoscope is different from Macintosh or Miller blade. My recommendation is to first develop competency with using the hyperangulated blade in normal airways, then move on to its use in a difficult airway. Since there is a camera integrated into the blade, the need to displace tissue for a direct view is not required. This also means you will use a midline approach when inserting the blade since no sweeping of the tongue is needed. Hyperangulated blades will typically require a stylet to ensure the endotracheal tube conforms to the angulation of the blade. A preform, rigid stylet that closely matches the angulation of the blade can keep the tube from bending during the intubation. With the hyperangulated blade, I like to insert the endotracheal tube adjacent to the blade. This allows me to see the direction of the endotracheal tube in the oropharyngeal space as it approaches the larynx. Today I'll be using a GlideScope Core video monitor with a Spectrum Low Pro S1 video laryngoscope on a pediatric mannequin. In step one, look in the mouth, insert the blade midline, and advance the tip of the blade until it goes around the base of the tongue. In step two, look at the video monitor. Now you will be able to see the tip of the blade. Advance the blade identify the epiglottis, and place the tip of the blade in the molecular as you would with a Macintosh-style blade. Ensure that you do not position the blade too deep. You should be able to see the tip of the blade in the molecular, and this blade position allows you to effectively manipulate the epiglottis and expose the vocal cords during intubation. This optimal positioning of the blade provides a panoramic view of the oropharynx. This broad view will also help you to see the endotracheal tube earlier when it enters the pharyngeal space. The expected view of the vocal cords on the monitor will be in the upper portion of the screen. In step three, look in the patient's mouth while inserting the endotracheal tube and watch as the tip of the endotracheal tube rounds the base of the tongue. In step four, look at the video monitor. You will now see the tip of the endotracheal tube come into view. Position the endotracheal tube in front of the vocal cords and then advance the endotracheal tube off the stylet and through the vocal cords. Do not insert the stylet through the vocal cords. If using a preform rigid stylet, remove it in the direction of the feet of the patient. Lubrication of the stylet may help facilitate the removal from the endotracheal tube. Also, I've found hyperangulated blades to be useful when I'm performing nasal intubations. The intubation can be performed easily and without the use of McGill forceps.